I'm excited about this piece, by the way. Which one is that? There's no place like home, number 25. Obviously, I mean, being from Aberdeen now, I feel like I can say I'm an Aberdonian after living here for a little over six years. Um, this is mixed media color drawing. Um, I want to say it's colored pencil from the close-up viewpoint I'm seeing versus pen and ink, but it's number 25. So colored drawing, I'm going to say colored pencil. There's um, right. beautiful quality of shading and control of the color shifting from each color and even in the gray black and white of the tin fan and I love the fact that it is used on recycled ledger paper right and um, this upside down dreamy like quality of the house you know like that tornado feel to it um, uh, even the way that uh, the ledger paper kind of complements like the line dragging straight down through the center of Dorothy's face the, it works um, there's such a nice quality about it and some of the text on the ledger paper is kind of coming forward through um, the figurines, especially across the forehead of the lion and creating texture of the face of the strong man. Is it a strong man? I should really know my... The, um, the scarecrow? The scarecrow. Why did I call it a strong man? Because I drew a blank. Yes. Well, like, like drawing side of him. And, uh... The detail of the castle is beautiful with these little flares of sparkly stars through it, too. Um, wish I got to see the real deal. Um, but the photograph is a very nice quality photograph of it, for sure. And each of the characters have their own personality. And their eyes are so small. even looking at, at Dorothy's dress and seeing, again, seeing like the drapery and seeing like the quality of the, well, even the, the scarecrow too, like the quality of the cloth and like the line work and the shading and yeah, everything. And the movement of each of them, definitely um, good visual focus into rendering each layer with the colored pencils too. It makes me happy. It's a good whimsical piece. Yeah, the ledger paper is such an interesting addition to it too, because it adds such a, you know, it adds to the visual element. It adds to the interest too, because I feel, yeah, I don't know, because I'm, because it's it's really great, and I mean, it really adds to the image quality, and especially like with the the line work with the uh, Emerald City. Right. And just the vertical lines, it really draws your eye to each of the characters. Well, and the challenge with ledger paper, too, it's thinner than most drawing papers. So with all the layering quality, you have to have a soft hand in that creation to build up all those colors and not, like, you know, start pulling away from the paper. Because it is a, a lighter weight paper in general, too. It's got a nice quality. I really enjoy this piece. And mm -hmm. even the way the ledger paper line um, breaks up the different spaces without it being straight in the center. Um, visually, the artist really thought hard on it. Uh, on, visual placement and layering and quality overall. It's um, very well done. Really enjoying it. 
And the shading is beautiful. Definitely. Can you see all the different colors and shading of the lion itself too? Shifting from the oh. yellows to the reds and subtle hint of green even in the ear and around the face. Very nice. They have a very nice understanding of color and even seeing like the reds and the purples in, in Dorothy's face. Mm -hmm. and how that contrasts yeah yeah they they have a really great understanding of color and use of color yeah and even um the yellow brick road and that visual dimension of it disappearing into the space of the unknown into the castle itself very nice Definitely. Makes me wonder if they want to go into illustration. For sure. Okay, this one is number 19. It's called Not Enough Hands. Has that Japanimation kind of quality or animation. colored drawing. Um, it appears to be a colored pen or marker, I should say, by the quality of the photo. It has um, the shifting of the purple looks like it would be marker versus colored pencil is my guess. Okay. And even the background, um, the line work to create the black, it looks like it's um, marker just to give you a heads up on that i'm already enjoying the way the hands are cut off and having this appear like almost meaty you know right um, i was just thinking about that too <laughs> It's like a combination of different thought processes put into this image beyond just the illustrative animation quality to it. Um, Rocky Horror Picture Show, in a sense, brings to my attention with the way the hands are. Definitely. There's some nice shading quality to allow that dimension to kind of push and pull around, even in with the neck and under the eyes and around the hairline. So there's a, a nice rendering, but simplicity to it um, that a true illustrator would approach to a piece of work. Um, simple can be more effective than a lot of detail when it comes to illustration style. And I think they uh, captured that really well. Even the subtle lines, not creating a full line, but just those, that little bit of line detail to create that sense of realism without pushing it too far. Right. Very nice quality to it. Definitely. Do you have more to say about this piece? Well, I don't think so. I just can't help but notice my favorite part is like, you know, like there is something really kind of uh, kind of disturbing about seeing the, you know, seeing these dismembered hands, but like my, but in a good way. I mean, that's right. Like by any means. But I mean, but like the little details and how they're, you know, they're severed, but then you can still see the little white. I think it's a, it's an interesting touch. And it adds, it definitely adds, it's interesting how one little detail like that can add so much. Right, I totally agree on that. Very nice. All right. 
so the next piece is number five. It's mm -hmm. called Metamorphosis. It's graphite pencil drawing mm -hmm. of a dragon. All right. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The detail on this piece is pretty remarkable. It really um, is. Last night when I was looking at this image, I zoomed up to notice that even in the rendering of the scales, it shifts to the movement and then it even shifts into the pattern that shifts into a different line formation to the end of the tail that almost, it becomes like a shoelace. Can you zoom right. up into that to oh, see I, that at all? Uh, I didn't even notice that right away. Yeah, well, that's why I said I, I really zoomed up in a lot of the imagery that Laura sent us. Um, Especially with this one, because you could see that there was more quality and details to it than what first hits your eye. Um, and with graphite, you need to have control and be able to um, give that visual texture and shifting, not only with your shading and value, but how your pattern and repetition can shift to create that movement and flow of the figure um, in every realm and entity of it um, making you know repetition going from large to small scale as well um, so whoever created this piece i was just like wowed by the control of the graphite pencil itself and then the subtlety and movement of this smoky cloud effect without overtaking the subject matter at hand is a really nice rendering quality to it. Um, and again, utilizing how your line, even your outer edges being lighter or darker to give that three-dimensional flow on a two-dimensional surface. I really enjoy the... Um, attention to detail even the talons on the dragon's feet and teeth really there's just that nice sense of quality and variation of size and shadows definitely that's the thing that i noticed right away is that the quality of the talons you know and all that detail and how yeah And even like looking at the transition from the scales to like the cross hatching of the shoelace too. Like it's a Yeah, it's a nice cool. subtle shifting, so it's not abrupt, which I really enjoy that quality of it. It intrigues me to see how this artist would incorporate color. Um, maybe they're not great at color and they're really good at just understanding value and that shifting of shading of value and texture. And, you know, um, that's the first stepping stone before you start understanding color in general anyways. But yeah, there's a nice, beautiful quality and handling through this whole piece. And the fact that it's the real deal and not a photograph makes me pleased so that I can visually see it more accurately. Because even some of the, the shoelace, it shifts where it gets bubbly to one smooth line to like more jaggedy line to give that texture of material shift is a nice subtle details that I'm really enjoying about this piece beyond just the movement itself. Compositionally, I think they um, placed it in a nice rendering way onto the paper. 
and the choice of format too. Giving that extra little space What do you think? Definitely. I think it'd be really kind of interesting to see, to ask them about, you know, what, what they use for a reference. Right. Maybe yeah. it was a combination of reference to their imagination too, especially oh, with that concept of a shoelace towards the end of the tail. Shifting. Right. Is it, yeah. Yeah, just the different textures kind of blow me away. Like the, the beard on the dragon, the scales, the shoelace, the, the horns, the teeth. Yeah, it's very nicely done. Again, another amazing illustration. I um, like the title. Seeing the title before the image, I wasn't sure what I was going to end up seeing. Definitely, I was thinking Kafka right away. <laughs> right, well, I was thinking butterfly, or you know, like the metamorphosis of life in general. Okay, now we're moving on to photography. Ooh, all right. This one is number 30, called Reflections. <clears throat> I like this overall compositionally and the subtle colors of gold with her golden hair, but it almost has that um, princess or fairy tale quality to it um, for a photograph. I really enjoyed this piece Definitely. immediately when I saw it. I think it's interesting too. Like, I mean, like it. Um, it's nice seeing the, the gold frame with the gold hair, but then also noticing that it's a winter scene and she has that floral shirt. So it's almost like a, maybe almost like a Persephone kind of quality to it. Right. But frame. then the mirror has this pattern and floral antiquity to it that connects. Mm -hmm. And then she's balanced in between this, the background to the foreground. Um, the way they craft and chose to take the picture at this angle, I thought was brilliant. Has a little bit more of an obscurity to it. And there's just this really nice sense of movement overall between the foreground and the background that just keeps the visual eye moving and appreciating not only the young lady between, you know, this foreground to that foreground and the mirror and the background. It's captivating for sure. Definitely. Yeah, the use of color is really nice. And then also like, you know, with the softness, it almost makes me think of, um, it almost thinks of, makes me think of those hand colored photos. Like with the pinkness in her cheeks and Right, and the fact that it's reflections, plural, it's beyond just the human figure reflection um, that I appreciate as well. Um, and you can barely tell, but there's a little tiny thumb hanging out over here, but it blends into this like pattern to the, the mirror that it doesn't even have like a distraction it almost looks like the mirror is almost floating into this like whimsical scene. Right. And from what yeah. I can tell from the photograph, it doesn't look like there's any color manipulation through Photoshop or anything, because you're still getting this nice um, 
natural glare that the sun and reflection would have with the mirror. But I could be wrong. Definitely. And the continuity of like the tree. Oh, you froze. Trees too, like the, the trees behind the mirror. The... Okay. Nice photograph, for sure. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to hand them back. It's a nice, it's a great approach to a portrait. Yes. This one is number 10. It's also a photo called Shadows. Ooh, see, I wondered if this was part of the piece or if it was just something when you send it visually, but um, I liked the concept of this with the hand and the flower. The flower almost looks fake, like a synthetic flower, but I could be wrong. But I like the way it casts a shadow like that. You know, from the thumbnail, I almost thought that it was a, um, that it was a watercolor. I don't know. I don't know why. Yeah, I couldn't tell with this one from the photo. Um, other than I question it because of how visual the hand was itself, that I was like, oh, it's got to be a photograph. Um, but I like the concept of uh, shadow puppets, but using um, pre-existing elements besides just your hand to create this um, theatrical approach, almost like you're watching a shadow puppet show. Mm. And the color yeah. contrast is nice, um, using that yellow wall background to the color complement, complementing of the flower itself and the tone, tonal values of the skin. Whether that's intentional or not, I thought that was a brilliant color combination. It's subtle but effective. Right. Nice source of light to have that transition between the actual figure to the shadow. They're, they're not the same, you know? That's the one quality right. I really enjoyed about it too. Yeah, there's definitely a nice contrast to it. That's the first thing that sticks out to me, the contrast of the color and the contrast as well as with the, the shadow or use right. of shadow. And from this image, when I'm looking at up close, there's a lot of texture and color shifting in the leaves that makes me wonder if there was some kind of photoshopping or with it being a plastic flower that there was just that much color because there's a lot of pixelation going on in the shifts of mm -hmm. where the light source is on these leaves and even with the petal to give it that um, silky flower quality to it. Right, like they push the level, like saturation levels. Yeah. Yeah. There's a nice quality to it though. I like the whimsical playfulness between the two for sure. Definitely. This is number 16, black and white photography and its simplicity. I visually thought these were stones and thinking it was a sculptural piece of the gradation of white to black, but there's little S's and some kind of text. Again, my old lady eyes, I can't see exactly what it's saying, but I think there's Skittles and like 
Jelly bellies. Jelly, which makes it kind of a fun play for sure. Um, I definitely like the the choice of making this value gradation of white to black and even the shift of shadows by the way each of them are individually laid out from variation of shape and size not you know even though they're all similar to each other just the way they're rendered creates a different visual shift of the spacing of the shadows and the size quality itself cute i would have never thought it was candy it's a nice value study that's for sure yeah i literally thought they were like river stones when i saw the first photograph of it so that's mind-blowing i definitely <laughs> enjoy that that's what i was kind of thinking too but I, I would like to know if they're all the same. Like there's this one, that, uh, I can't read it. And I'm not a candy eater to even know if I would be close of taking a <laughs> grand jester. But I'm guessing the S is Skittles. Yep, I think so. So jelly beans, Skittles, and whatever that is. But great title being Simplicity, too, um, with the gradation of the value scale like that. It's very nice. The next one is number 20, Out of the Mist. It's a photograph as well. Um, it appears as if she's coming out of uh, like a bath like it looks like it's liquid around her face and then it has this smoky appearance too oh yeah yeah like it almost looks like there's like smoke coming out off the side of the face but then there's also this flexion of water like a sense of a sense of it like wetness And then these entities inside would be maybe her hair casting through this like milky surface to it. Oh, for sure. And in photography, like one of the, oh, or at least like one of the recipes for like a nice composition too is like you use the rule of threes. And she definitely, or they definitely have used or considered that, or maybe they didn't even consider it. Maybe it was like what we call a happy accident in art school. Right. You know? Yeah, she definitely used, or they definitely used the, the rule of threes. Yeah, I like the quality of this and the way the shadow casts and shifts the face a little bit from one side to the other. And the expression that's going on or lack of expression is kind of a nice quality yeah it's almost kind of a haunting quality to it and like the color like the the mist surrounding um the figure like i i really appreciate the color because it matches their eyes so well yeah well and that's what i was wondering if it was like you know a photo rendering or like hyped a little bit or if it was like staged in a, a bathtub because you do you know beyond this like smoky feeling you can see this like sheen of where it would be liquid right it's mysterious and i like that quality about it and i wonder what they use as a light source too yeah and it's interesting too because like when you when you look at the figure's hair and then you see the um you know whatever that that black is that's coming out of it it definitely creates the illusion and i, I guess i don't know if that's actually the hair underneath like the the surface right or if that's the black 
um, stuff. <laughs> stuff like here. part of the film itself, or yeah. It's got a sense of mystery to it. That's what I really enjoy about it too. Um, very well rendered. Uh, it would make a really good album cover, I think. True. <laughs> Okay, the next one is uh, number 17. I thought this was gonna be a three-dimensional um, assemblage piece at first sight. This is a black and white photography called In the Kitchen. And now that I see the photograph in real life versus on line, there's blueberries and strawberries and pears and apples. And I think this might be kiwi. They have a fuzzy quality to it, um, which I didn't notice last night when I was looking at the images. I thought they were all like different tools in the kitchen. So I like the combination that it's food and utensils against this grainy wood. Yeah, it picked up a lot of nice detail in the, in the wood grain and on the strawberries. And it's a, it's a really interesting composition. Well, and the fact that the light source is coming at one angle to give you this like dramatic stage-like quality, um, giving it more of that theatrical aspect that you get a lot of times when you are in the kitchen creating, um, especially if you cook like me. <laughs> it's like, oh, what do I have to do? You know, like, let's make whatever is available and see what comes out of my creation or concoctions. Um, so yeah, it's a nice quality to it. Definitely. Again, another moment where I really wish I could see this in real person, real life, um, just because of all the different textures and qualities you would get from the visual eye that you're not getting from a photograph itself. Um, oh, I thought maybe you could see the reflection of the person taking the picture in the spoon, but you can't. There is some sort of reflection though, for sure. You know, and, it's, and it is kind of tough too to, um, to to judge it from a photo of a photo because lighting is so so important with photography. It's like the I don't know the main one of the main ingredients to the recipe. <laughs> right. I personally am enjoying the just the different visual textures to it. Um, and the concept of um, utensils and food, they all have visual texture as well as texture to the quality of eating or the utensils, like a wood spoon versus a silver spoon. It creates a different texture as it hits your mouth, just like the different fruits that are here, the textures of the fruits, the flavor of the fruits, that, you know, that the quality that each of them kind of give to the taste buds itself. Definitely, and how it also kind of like serves as like a, well, it's, a, it's an interesting value study too, where it kind of, you know, it starts out with like the black spoon, the blueberries, the strawberries, and then all the way to the white spatula. And that's kind of, that's difficult to try to, get the proper lighting for, for a composition like that. And especially, you know, when you're at high school level of photography, they have a very good eye. Yeah. I like the repetition and patterns going on totally in this piece in lining with um, the background too. Nice little quality to it. 
Moving on.